Welcome to the Plant Trainers Podcast, where we're helping people improve their quality of life through nutrition and fitness. And now, your hosts, nutrition and wellness coaches, international speakers, Adam and Shoshana Chaim. Hey, I'm Adam Chaim. And I'm Shoshana Chaim, and we are Propelled, Propelled by, by plants. plants. Today we bring to you episode 410, Good Food Gratitude with Holland Hawaii. In this episode of the Plant Trainers Podcast, we talk with Holland about good food and giving gratitude and all those other things that come along with it. We talk about her personal experience with her health journey and how to take some of your favorite non-vegan foods and not only veganize them, but kind of go step by step to healthify them along the way, if that's even a word. And if you're somebody who can't find a nut milk that you like, we're going to go through some of the ideas that you can do to find one that you do, or even what you need to know about making your own. Holland Hawaii is an expert in vegan plant-based food and cleanses. As a Cordon Bleu trained chef, health advocate, former restaurant owner, and mom of three, she's worn many hats in her life. She knows the one that matters most is her relationship with herself and her body. When those two are aligned, everything falls into place and she can be a better mother and chef. Holland has been on her own health journey for 13 years and loves sharing her perspective and experience with food that led her to be in charge of her own health. Good Food Gratitude is Holland's plant-based lifestyle cookbook that also encourages people to change the way they perceive healthy food. True to her family-friendly, beach-inspired lifestyle and aesthetics, Holland lives on the beautiful Garden Isle of Kauai and enjoys spending time in the kitchen with family and friends and in the rejuvenating waters of the Pacific Ocean. You're going to love this episode. Lots of great tips in here to share, so enjoy the show. If you want a healthy, natural way to fuel your workouts or fire up your brain, Energy Bits are for you. Energy Bits are tiny spirulina algae tabs that are nutritionally dense, a source of mental and physical energy that is all natural and causes no stomach distress. They eliminate fatigue and hunger instantly with no caffeine, sugar, chemicals, gluten, or soy. Just pure plant-based nutrition. One ingredient, one calorie, and zero net carbs. I use them before workouts or sometimes just as a snack. They make me feel great and give me that extra energy boost I'm sometimes looking for. I also use recovery bits, which are tiny chlorella tabs. I use them after workouts or when I'm feeling hungry late at night. Visit energybits.com and order energy bits, recovery bits, vitality bits, or skinny bits, and use the promo code plant trainers to get 20% off your order at checkout. The link will also be in the show notes just in case you didn't get that all down. Improve your energy, wellness, and waistline all at the same time with energy bits. Check out energy bits today and feel the difference. Your brain and body will say thank you. And now for a moment of gratitude. Today, during my daughter's lunch, she invited me to a picnic in the park where she packed up a bag and we took a blanket and walked on over to the park, sat there, we FaceTimed with my mother and we just had a great time hanging out. And I'm so grateful for that experience, something we wouldn't have been able to do if she wasn't at home doing virtual learning. And at the same time, Russ, our son, took me outside to play some basketball and exactly that, just grateful to be able to spend some extra time with the family. Holland, you're in Hawaii. It looks gorgeous there for those on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining us on the Plant Trainers podcast today. Thank you so much. I am thrilled to be here and it is a beautiful sunny day in Hawaii. <laughs> it looks beautiful. It looks sunny and we would love to hear what you're grateful for today on this beautiful morning. You know, I wake up, I'm always grateful for life, but today it's funny. I, uh, had to go and buy a cup of coffee because I was out to make it at my house. And I literally kissed the to-go cup because I am so grateful for coffee. <laughs> I just love it. <laughs> Is there a special way that you like your coffee prepared? I always do it in a French press and I add a little maple syrup or sugar and I always do almond milk. And I like it to taste like coffee, like actually be coffee, not like I don't like fragrant. I like it to be coffee and bold. Dark, nice. dark and black is the way I would go. But, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I plan to be a grown up one day and drink my coffee that way. <laughs> <laughs> one day, one day. <laughs> Gotta have dreams and goals, right? <laughs> exactly. And keep them realistic. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so we would love to hear a little bit about your story and how you found a plant-based vegan lifestyle. Yeah. So 
I've been vegan for 14 years and I was just about 30 and I had some health concerns. I wasn't feeling well. I had just had my third baby. I had had gestational diabetes with her, which just kind of showed me my body was reacting. I hadn't had it with the other two pregnancies. So there was just like a little alarm and concern. And so a friend brought over a book and told me, you know, if you feed your kids cafeteria lunch food, you should read this book. And so I started reading it and I stayed up all night and it just hit on so many points of things that I had going on in my body. I was overweight. I didn't feel good. I didn't have vitality. I didn't really have spunk for life. I really was surviving. And so I just decided I'm going to go vegan. I had been a chef before. All of a sudden, I was opened up to all these ingredients. Like it was a lifestyle that I just really gravitated to. I didn't really have issues with my transition because I kept having ahas in my health and in my weight and my skin and pretty much every process in my body. And so... I just kind of became obsessed with plant foods and what they can do for the body, how to get people to eat more of them. And it really became my passion in life and really my purpose. And so that's how it all began. And it's continuing. (laughs) So did the children join you on that journey right away? What was that progression like? Just because I'm their main caregiver, you know, they were little at that time. My kids are young adults now. And so it was incredible because I had my house go vegetarian. So my kids for the first year, like lived mainly probably off mac and cheese and quesadillas because all they wanted was like the cheese foods. And so about a year in, I decided my house is going to be vegan. I'm so committed to this. Like I want it more for my kids than I do for myself. However, I also knew that like I had grown up on a standard American diet and I was having all of these changes within myself in my 30s that what I had been told that the first 30 years really matter the most wasn't necessarily true. I had so many changes happening. And so I really had to let go of my righteous vegan with my kids. My kids are extremely humbling to me in this respect And really just try to learn how to get them to like love those foods and hope that their comfort foods when they're older are healthy. You know, when my kids are upset, I don't want them to want ice cream. I want them to want an acai bowl, right? Or like, oh my God, I want that vegan Caesar. And so my house turned to vegan. And as my kids got older, they had their own relationship with food. But I always kept my house vegan And considering I pay for most everything, I would say they're about 90% there. And still to this day. That's great. Do they feel a difference when they're eating inside the house for a while and then they go out with their friends and eat what they want? Do they feel difference in their health? Yes. Yeah. My kids are really aware of the effect food has on your body. Even my son would call me from college and be like, oh, I need to do a vegan gluten-free cleanse. Like I'm just not feeling good. And so they know, and that's like the most important thing to me. Do my kids feel in charge of their health and feel like they can change things with food alone? And I would say yes, absolutely. It's always interesting to me that when people are not feeling well, they want to go back and do that vegan gluten-free cleanse. But why don't they just do it all the time if they know that they're going to feel good eating that way? Like it's just the concept is mind boggling to me. So it's mind boggling to him, but it's not mind boggling to me (laughs) because we have different brains. (laughs) You know what? It's funny because that's where I was like with him. I was like, you're preaching to the choir because literally like I went vegan and I didn't look back. And it's like, I want to say, you know, 14 years better. I feel better than I did in my twenties, you know? And I always say like vegan isn't the end all be all. It's not like you just switch to this and like, everything's great. Like you have to start to understand you're an evolving human. You have different needs. Are you supporting yourself? Like me and my friend were just talking and we were talking about like, you know, when your body knows like something's kind of off where it's giving you like those subtle hints, like, "Mm, I don't feel that great. Or you just have like more and more, you're not really in health, but you're not out of health. And like, 
for me with being vegan, I have to switch what I eat all the time. Like beyond burgers are super good. Like I am a chef. I can make anything vegan. I had vegan enchiladas last night that were incredible. But if I'm not paying attention to what I eat and what my body needs to be supported, like I'll go off health being vegan. And so for me, I know that I control it with the foods that I eat. And I always try to really stay in that middle zone. I try not to be too healthy now because at times I get neurotic and I'll be on cleanses forever. I keep thinking that there's like a healthier state. But at this point, I found like this really beautiful middle ground with it. And I know when I need to go left or right, you know, either healthier or less healthy. So I have a hard time understanding how you couldn't have that relationship with food or your body. But I also understand that like when you are eating the foods, like your body craves more of them, even though you might not necessarily need them. So it's like that hard kind of place. And I work with tons of clients and people that tell me when they're eating my food, even if they are eating lasagna and burgers and everything of my food, that they feel way better. There's no denying it but there's something in them where they just can't make the switch over. And, you know, my life's work is really trying to understand that. And how can you get people to want to feel good all the time? Like a lot of people aren't comfortable feeling good. They're not comfortable having a lot of energy. And so it's like that really hard middle point is how do you get people there? There's definitely a scary thing about feeling okay, right? There's lots of there's <laughs> lots of people who walk through our door and we know they're not ready, right? They're here to ask the questions, mm-hmm. but they're not ready to to make the change. Luckily, our listeners are all here because they are plant-based, they are vegan, <laughs> or they are on their journey and they're looking for those tools, that inspiration to keep going. They're okay knowing that maybe they made a mistake yesterday, but yesterday night was a great opportunity to just start back up again. So, you know, you've got, you've got some really great listeners here and and watchers here on YouTube who are ready to make that change. So you talked about the Caesar salad and the burger and the lasagna and stuff like that. So let's talk about taking regular standard American diet food and switching out some of those ingredients so that we can have plant based or vegan options and maybe even health them up a little bit. So what are some of your go-tos when it comes to replacing? Like for Caesar salad, do you start from scratch or do you take that Caesar salad recipe that already exists and just veganize it? Well, you know, both. Like I've been cooking vegan now for 14 years. I had a restaurant for six and a half years. I have a cookbook. And so at this point, I pretty much can look at anything and I can just take it apart in my head and re-veganize it. I know what I would use. And there's all different levels of health and where you're at. Like if you're someone that eats Subway sandwiches every day or you are someone that eats like a standard American diet, like I say, stick to more of those foods in a vegan variation And then when your body gets to the point that it's plateaued and you're not seeing changes, then we want to take a step further. So like I have evolving recipes, right? So like for a lasagna, I loved vegetarian lasagna. I loved Stouffer's vegetarian lasagna growing up. I'm one of six kids. Like, and so for me replacing it, when I start, I do lasagna noodles, I do tomato sauce that's organic that I love. I do spinach. And then I do tofu that I crumble in salt. I make a cashew cheese, which is just cashews, water, and salt in a blender. I do not sprout anything. I don't have time for it. And I blend that. I pour it over the tofu. And then I stack it just like I would regular lasagna, right? You do tomato sauce, noodles. You're going to do tofu mixture. You spinach, repeat, 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 right? But then if I plateau, I'm going to slowly change that recipe. Like I'm going to use brown rice noodles next time and do it exactly that way. And then the next time, instead of tofu, I'm going to do cauliflower, which is only 30 calories per cup if I'm trying to cut down on it. I'm going to use zucchini instead of noodles. So it's knowing where you're at and what you need to replace to get that mouthfeel to get it to stick, right? If I give someone that was eating Stouffer's last night, 
my zucchini cauliflower cashew. They're going to be like vegan foods awful. But if I get them with the glutinous soy stuffed lasagna and slowly work them there, their taste buds are going to change. They're going to evolve. And um, they'll be craving that zucchini, butternut squash, cauliflower lasagna like I do, just like I did the Stouffer's when I was 16. Absolutely. I think that it makes a huge difference. And we've done the same with with our kids over time is you take the, the white rice and you add a quarter cup of brown rice. And then next time you make it, you add half a cup of brown rice and you you make the ratios change over time. And, you know, doing that with our own food and making that progress from the the version you start with to the version you want to get with, but not making that huge jump because the taste buds just aren't ready. The textures aren't, aren't there. So you've got to teach your body to like it or teach your mouth to like it. Yeah. And like, there's ones right now, like I would say anyone who's listening, who has regular mayonnaise or regular butter in their fridge, throw it out and get veganase. I love the soy free and earth balance. I love the soy free. The milkadamia makes an incredible butter. Mykonos makes an incredible, or Mykonos. (laughs) But like those things, they're killing it right now with how incredible they are, but replacing that. And then down the road, you'll get to the point where like, you don't need vegan A's to make that ranch dressing. And you're happy with doing it with Mac nuts, a whole base one, but we want to get you there. So like for me, ranch dressing, I do vegan A's. I thin it out with a little plant-based milk. I use almond milk for everything, salt, and then tons of dried dill until it tastes like that hidden valley that you love to have with your pizza. Have that with a vegan pizza. That's going to give you that mouthfeel and that creaminess. And so that's kind of my whole thing. And then, you know, down the road, we're going to be doing it with just water, magnet, salt, and dill, but kind of getting people there. Sounds like a lot of work for the person who doesn't have that awareness of how food is making them feel. And a lot of people, I think, don't really find it so important to build an awareness around the food and make the connection to how they feel with the food that they're eating. So I love the idea of the progression, but someone who's listening might be thinking, oh my God, that sounds like so much work for me to now put that together. I just want it to be easy. I would say it's kind of natural. Like at least for me, it was natural, right? And like- There's so much more great information coming your way. But before we get to that, we wanted to share with you and let you know that if you want a healthy, natural way to fuel your workouts or fire up your brain, Energy Bits are for you. Energy Bits are tiny spirulina algae tabs that are nutritionally dense, a source of mental and physical energy that is all natural and causes no stomach distress. They eliminate fatigue and hunger instantly with no caffeine, sugar, chemicals, gluten, or soy, just pure plant-based nutrition. One ingredient, one calorie, and zero net carbs. I use them before workouts or sometimes just as a snack. They make me feel great and give me that extra energy boost I'm sometimes looking for. I also use recovery bits, which are tiny chlorella tabs. I use them after workouts or when I'm feeling hungry late at night. Visit energybits.com and order energy bits, recovery bits, vitality bits, or skinny bits, and use the promo code plant trainers to get 20% off your order at checkout. The link will also be in the show notes just in case you didn't get that all down. Improve your energy, wellness, and waistline all at the same time with energy bits. Check out energy bits today and feel the difference. Your brain and body will say thank you. And now back to the show. When I went 14 years ago, when I went vegan, there were not products. There was nothing. And so all of those things I had to make, and like, that's one of the things that I try to teach people to do. I am a chef. I could make anything from scratch all the way down to like, every single part of it, but I'm also a mom of three. And like when I make chili, I'm not soaking my beans and waiting overnight or doing anything. I'm buying organic chili beans and baked beans and kidney beans, and I'm adding fresh tomatoes and cilantro to it. And so there's that part of where food can become too complex. And that's more about recipes, but the body, it's kind of the same thing. I pay zero attention to anything I do except for to how I feel. Like 
Everything I eat that is like amazing for my body, if I have too much of it, it becomes a trigger for some autoimmune in my body. So this is where people have to start understanding this for themselves. Like nothing is completely bad. If you have an allergy, if you have celiac, yes, it's bad. But for the most part, like if I replace, say, gluten with brown rice products, at some point I'm going to have the same issues I had with gluten with brown rice because it's just an overabundance of that. So what I'm trying to explain is that I just go with the feeling. Like sweet potatoes, I do super good on. My body loves them. I add them to salads. I eat them plain. I make them as toast. But at some point when my body gets enough from them, I'll eat sweet potatoes and all of a sudden I'm tired. And, you know, after eating them a couple of times and I realize I'm tired, I'm just like, oh, my body doesn't need sweet potatoes. And I know it sounds complicated, but like literally it's not science. It's just simple. Like I ate something, did it make me feel good or bad? And like I said, it can take a few times to get there. Like for me, maybe I had the sweet potato with avocado on it. And then the next time I had it in a salad and the next time it was like part of dinner, you know, it takes a few times for me to figure out what the culprit is, but you definitely have to be on it and have this passion and want to know your body. But once you do, it's so simple. And I think that people just starting out are maybe saying, how do I become more aware of my body? How do I take that time? So what techniques do you use personally? I mean, at this point, I'm sure you just know, but should they do a little bit of meditation after they eat? Should they keep a journal, scale of one to 10? What would you recommend? When you don't know, first of all, like when you're not connected with your body anyway, like you don't have a connection with food symptoms are like, you know, it's very hard to kind of start to see it. And so for me, I tell people to write down what they eat, even if you're not someone that's good about keeping a journal every day, just writing down the normal foods you eat. And I say from there, you look at the things that you do consistently. Like, don't tell me you react to pea protein because you had a shake two times, but you put half and half in your coffee every single day and you're not looking to see if that's it. The things we do repetitively every single day matter so much more than something that like will shock your system for a minute. And so that's the thing. Do you do half and half every day? Do you add 2% milk to it? Do you have bacon and eggs every single morning? So that's really where I tell people to start and to switch those behaviors. Like if you have a burger once a week, I'm not so worried about it as I'm worried about like the glass of chocolate milk you have every night if that makes sense. So that's kind of where I tell people to start. See what you're doing every day repetitively and see if you can change those small ones. Yeah. At the beginning, you talked about your family being vegetarian in the home and then you transitioned to vegan about a year later. Most people start off that way. They go vegetarian, then they progress to vegan. And the biggest challenge that people have is replacing their dairy and switching those products. So What are some ideas that our listeners can use or do in replacing the dairy if they're vegetarian now, want to become more vegan? What could they use to replace their milks or their cheeses? Yeah. So number one is like knowing you're addicted to cheese. Literally, you are addicted, right? There's morphine in mother's milk. When we make cheese, it gets compounded. So like when you're drinking milk, it's very trace amounts. You don't see it, but it's compounded in cheese. So like literally when you say you can't give up cheese, like it is an addiction. So number one, like you just have to know this is an addiction. So I think there's so many amazing products out there now, cheese wise in terms of replacement. But when I went vegan, there really weren't. And so for me, it's about getting that creamy mouthfeel, right? Like if it was like a cheese sandwich, do I have something on it that's creamy and will like remind me of that? Like an avocado sandwich, maybe putting some veganaise on it. I do cashew cheese that I make myself. Like I said, I do cashews water and salt and a Vitamix. It becomes like a creamy, pourable cheese. It's as thick or thin as you want it with the amount of water. And it's just making sure you get those pops. When you bake cashew cheese, it's really amazing. The water comes out of it. It becomes almost like a ricotta. 
I love diet cheese for melting. So I don't know. One of the things I say to my clients is the biggest thing that had me give up cheese is like understanding a sponge when you wash. That's when I removed it from my house is everything for me. Like I don't need to see the science behind it. Like I need to see it myself. And so when you are cleaning up cheese off a plate on a sponge, the way it sticks to you is very much the same of the way it sticks to your intestines when it's going down and vegan cheese doesn't do that. So like having experiments and really seeing what you're doing to your body and then also giving yourself enough time for your taste buds to change once again. Like I love vegan cheese as much as I loved regular cheese. It's the same love affair. It's just a healthier lover. And same thing with milks, right? Is that there's so many milks now, right? It used to be soy and almond. First it was soy, then it was soy and almond. And now we got like hemp, oat. Well, there's so many different ones. So number one, try them all to see which one you like. I love almond milk. There's people who can't stand it. I love it, right? And there's people who love oat milk so much. You just have to give it different ones. And in terms of milk, shelf-stable milks, right? Like the ones you can get at Costco or the ones that are on the shelf at your health food store. Those are like a non-fat replacement of milk. So if you're using those to replace 2% or whole milk, it's going to be horrible and awful, just like if you use non-fat milk in it. So any of the higher quality milks are in the refrigerated section because they have a higher amount of grain, nut, or seed in them. So I always recommend that. Know what you're replacing, right? You want to make sure you're replacing it with something that's up to par with what you were replacing. And that's kind of the biggest one. And then we talked about making your own milk. Like I've made my own milks when I had my restaurant. At this point with my children, we buy milk. But I always have done one cup to eight cups of water of whatever it is, whether it be oats, almonds, sesame seeds, hemp seeds, cashews. You can buy nut milk bags at the store. You just squeeze them out. They're just like a paint strainer. It's like you're milking your own milk. And uh, you can add a little salt, a little maple syrup. Some people do dates to give it just a little bit of sweetness and the salt brings out a little flavor. You can store it in glass jars. Normally they say only about two to three days because there's no preservatives. And then depending on where you live in the world, you're going to want to be careful about leaving it out on the counter and maybe it'll last a little longer or a little less time inside the fridge as well. Why don't you speak to us a little bit about that living in Hawaii and how hot it is there? (laughs) I know. I I was saying to you guys earlier, like everything ferments here. I don't sprout anything because if you leave it on the counter literally longer than six hours, like it smells horrible and it's fermenting. And so here, especially with fresh milks, they're going to separate. You want to get them into the fridge as soon as possible. If you live somewhere where it's like 40 degrees in your house, you can leave it out. (laughs) But you just want to get it in as much as possible. And because there aren't emulsifiers, although you could always add like a little oil in your high powered blender, but what's going to happen is the water and the nut milk are going to separate. So you always just want to shake it before you serve it, but that's totally normal. We just add in little scientific things that make it all stay together. (laughs) Do you ever find that either store-bought milk or homemade milk, if you add it to hot coffee or hot soup, that it kind of curds? Mm -hmm. It definitely does. And that has to do with the emulsifiers and the different things. It's just a chemical reaction. And so the store-bought ones won't do it. The barista ones definitely won't do it. And it just has to do with the amount of fat in it. If that happens, I know like when you put cow's milk and lemon juice together like that curds and that's going to turn your stomach Mm -hmm. and that you should never have but if you're if your nut milk's curd is that dangerous like do you need to throw it all out or no it should be fine if it's that way in the container and it's like you definitely probably want to throw it out but if it's happening when it hits the thing it's fine it's not the most appetizing and you can throw it in a blender It's just a chemical reaction, but it doesn't happen with the higher fat milk. So just get the refrigerated one and you won't have it as an issue. And when you're doing it yourself. I used a soy milk once, like from from the refrigerator, right, right into the instant pot. I guess it was too soon. 
And I looked at the soup and I just threw the whole thing out. Like I didn't think about the the blender, but I'd already seen it. So in my head, it was already a bad thing. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You eat with your eyes first. So, right. You definitely have to do that. And that's the thing. Like sky's the limit. Like you can make anything vegan and you can make it all different kinds of health, right? Depending on where you're at. Like yesterday I made vegan churros and I made them gluten-free, but we did fry them in oil and they were absolutely delicious. And my tummy didn't hurt after, but like everything you want, there is a recipe for and a way to make it that I promise you would taste absolutely delicious. And I think if people become more aware to how certain foods make them feel, it's going to help them go through the progression that you talked about earlier And so that's something to think about for our listeners. Yeah. And it's a lifestyle, right? Like this is my whole life. Like I've been doing this for 14 years. I am still on my health journey. You don't figure it out or it ends. So it's like the best thing you can do is just to invest in yourself and learning all of that. I'm so proud that I know more about my body processes than my doctor. And I don't know more about body's processes than my doctor, but I know more about mine because I'm paying attention. And so you just have to pay attention and love yourself first and want to feel good and know that like the body and life are out there. And for me, it started with plants. So that's what I'm selling. (laughs) <laughs> we're, we're always learning and it's always good to have new resources. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your book, Good Food Gratitude? Yeah. So the two things that changed my life were good food, all plant-based, all vegan and gratitude, gratitude for the simple things, gratitude for my body working, gratitude for just being able to change, you know? And so it's a collection of a hundred recipes. They're all vegan. There's lifestyle tips from Hawaii and things we do, but we go from juices to breakfast, to appetizers, soups, salads, sauces, dinners, yums, and everything in between there. And so it's a really great snapshot of all varying health styles too of cooking, just for people who are trying to switch over and, you know, miss some yummy foods. That sounds delicious. So we will link to that in our show notes at plantchainers.com. Where else would you like people to go to learn a little bit more about you and what you do? So on Instagram, I am at Holland, Hawaii, and my website is www.hollanhawaii.com. So Holland, Hawaii, those are the two places I'm most active, and it would be lovely to see any of your listeners there. Awesome. Thank you so much, Holland, for joining us on the Plant Trainers Podcast. We really appreciate you being here and all the tips that you shared with us today. Thank you so much. And thank you for having a platform where I can share. Thank you all so much for listening to this edition of the Plant Trainers Podcast. We want to make sure that you subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, or any other podcasting platform. We really appreciate the feedback we receive from you. Every time we get a five-star rating or review on iTunes from one of our fans, it really helps other people find us just like you did. Thanks so much to our patrons. To become a patron, visit us at patreon.com slash plant chainers even supporting us with one dollar really makes a difference in the quality of the show and don't forget to connect with us on instagram and twitter our handle is at plant trainers like plant trainers on facebook join our newsletter and check out our website at planttrainers.com for awesome recipes a list of our services and of course our latest podcast we encourage you to email your questions to info at planttrainers.com so that we can help you improve your quality of life through nutrition and fitness so we hope we've inspired you today join us again next time and and have have a a healthy healthy day. day or is that too corny it's a little cheesy